entomologist Emmett Brady recently met with some high school environmental activists in the city of Richmond. He joined the students to respond to their questions about the importance of bees and other pollinators. During National Pollinator Week, the students and the community want to know more about the bees, the native plants, and the part that the people themselves must play in this restoration project. People really don't understand bees and how they fit into the big picture, you know. They know honey and that's about it, right? And they stay, right? But there's, there's over 200... The honey bees that we rely on for pollination that are used industrially and that sting people and you know, people have allergic reactions to or the killer bees and honey, and those are all important. And they have, dis they have displaced many of the native bee populations. Now, why are native plants important? Because these bees are very plant specific. You know, the important thing about planting native plants is they know how to handle the environmental conditions that, that take place in an area, you know. They can handle drought, they can handle high temperatures. They, they have specific pollinators that seek out their flowers and help propagate their species. This garden right here is a perfect example of, if you look at the structure of a lot of indigenous California plants, you know, they tend to be tall and thin, a little bit on the dry side, you know, maybe looking like a shrub. The most important thing with National Pollinator Week is for people to realize that what they do in their garden and what they plant is not just decorative and it's not just to produce food. It's to help restore the vitality of our lives. If you look around, even here in this greenway, there's a lot of concrete, there's a lot of flat spaces. Can you just imagine what this city would be like if this look, these types of flowers were all up and down every street? You know, it's a fantastic idea because it's not only bringing beauty and the flowers into it, but it's attracting more life. It's nature. The insects come. Whether, whether we do anything or not, they're going to come and take care of the plants, you know. And so National Pollinator Week is all about people like you coming out and asking these questions about a world of life that is just endless. It's fascinating and endless, and it, it, it's the type of stuff that you can spend your life just learning about and appreciating. The neat thing about Pollinator Week, though, is it gets people in the mindset to do something about it. What can we do to help the pollinators? Well, that's a very good question. You know, there's a lot of different ways people can be involved. Uh, I think the most important thing that someone like yourself could do is simply plant native species. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. You know, um, a great resource is the Ecology Center, which is down in Berkeley. Oh, that's where Earth Team's office is. Yes, yes, you're right. Down in Berkeley on yeah. San Pablo Avenue. Yeah, yeah. They have a seed bank. They have a very innovative program. Uh, it's, it's great that Earth Team is right this year. Our club is in the same building, you know. But really, the simple thing is, you know, you know people who are going to plant gardens. Suggest that they plant a species that's a native plant and use the native seeds, you know. That'll attract the pollinators. The second thing you can do, and this is probably the one that I'm the most passionate about, is we got to stop using pesticides and herbicides. Sometimes in our current agriculture environment, in our gardening environment, it's necessary for a really quick short-term fix but the chemicals stay in the environment and they're extremely harmful to the, to the living world. So at home, you know, don't use uh, pesticides or fertilizers. And if you do, try and use something organic.